As a Dead Rising speedrunner, I spent a ton of hours playing the first game and beating it in a variety of ways. As well, I've always had a fascination with boss fights and challenging them. While doing more completionist runs, I'd always laugh at the way that we deal with the final boss, because we end up spinning on him until he dies, which I always think is hilarious. While thinking about the absurdity of this, and also taking influence from challenge runners such as my dry bread and Carcinogen SDA, I thought to myself, can I beat every Dead Rising boss fight by spitting on them? Traditionally, spitting on an enemy is useless and won't normally deal damage, but the drink Spitfire makes Frank into a venomous lizard and actually allows him to deal a base damage of 100 with each spit. For this challenge, this will include every mandatory and optional boss fight in the game, excluding the helicopter, because technically the helicopter's not a boss, and I know for a fact the spit can't kill the helicopter. The rules for this challenge are simple. I'm only allowed to spit for attacking bosses, Zombies in this challenge will be considered fodder and won't have any rules applied to them since they're already going to be incredibly annoying and even if I get grabbed, I, you know, throwing would count as a kill, so I wouldn't want that to invalidate anything. I can only use skateboards and cars for movement and I cannot use these during boss fights, with the exception of one car which I'll talk about later, and I'm required to finish all of Kent's missions and cannot kill Kent in phase 1, I have to actually do his boss fight. As well, since I know for a fact that I'll need the inventory and some of these bosses can hit hard, I'll be starting on a level 50 file so I don't constantly need to remake Spitfire and so I can have the additional health for this challenge. Personally, I think this is going to be a ton of fun and I'm excited to see how challenging it becomes with this dumb rule. In addition to that, I'm writing this challenge as I progress through this, so let's go! Starting things off, we drop in the mall as per usual. But instead of trying to be a good person and protecting people, we're going to immediately bolt to get some potato chips since it'll be one of our necessary ingredients for our Spitfire. Once we're actually in the game, we're going to be doing our first of three Kent missions. Kent is a slightly different boss to where you have to do three missions in order to cause this boss fight to happen. Two of these missions require you to take different kinds of photos. Our first mission only requires our base camera and will require us to take two different photos of Kent. After finishing with Kent, we're going to make our way over to the movie theater so we can create all of our Spitfires using the various ingredients. And now we're ready for our first boss, Carlito. Carlito 1 is a bit awkward at first due to the SMG and range he has on us. I probably should have drank in the Spitfire in the beginning of this fight instead of when I do it later, but I start by making my way until I'm able to safely get in range of Carlito. And while I take plenty of SMG hits, this fight is surprisingly easy once I consume the Spitfire, since the base damage of Spitfire actually hits Carlito incredibly hard with about 100 damage points per hit. With our first boss down, we now continue to the rest of the game to get our next bosses. As well, we take a moment to stylize our clothing a bit and make our way back to the safe house. This time, Carlito is much stronger and he's sporting a rifle. This fight makes me very happy I decided early to make this a level 50 challenge because Carlito does two bars of health with every single shot. Admittedly, it was much tougher to get close to him without the use of the skateboard, but once I did get in range, I was able to stunlock him using the spitting. However, I did need to dip into my extra spitfires, given how low my health actually dropped. We do get a victory here barely, and I'm surprised that Carlito 2 might actually be the hardest fight of this challenge, and we're getting to our first set of optional psychopaths. Well, it's everyone's most memorable moment in all of Dead Rising. Uh, the Convicts. I remember many nights playing this game on my Xbox and just being terrified by losing all my survivors and my own save file due to the Convicts killing me. Shockingly enough though, this fight was actually incredibly easy, uh, mainly because we have a trick where we can get the convict stuck on a tree and then we can have access to the gunner, in which we can start spitting on him until he dies. I did have to reload my Spitfire mid-fight, but after we reloaded it was incredibly smooth sailing as I covered the convicts with a deadly spit. 
After this, we actually do need to grab the maintenance key, and because we'll need access for here later. With the convicts indisposed of, and now that we have the maintenance key, I think we're going to start getting to the harder fights in this game. While I didn't take much damage during this fight, Cliff actually has ridiculous invulnerability frames. And essentially, I was trading blows with him for a while as he would slash and I would spit on him. Even worse, near the end of the fight, he actually ends up escaping, and then I had to track him down. But luckily, I was able to get up top, and outside of a single flare stun, we were able to kill Cliff pretty simply. In addition to this, I thought it would be fun to also spit on his survivors so we have them dead, because I do need them dead later on to spawn in other bosses. No mercy, and I'm pretty sure killing these three was longer than some of the boss fights we've done so far. Originally, when I wanted to record this game, I knew for a fact what the hardest fight would be, and I'm pretty sure I was correct, uh, given all my memories as a kid with this game. Cletus is packing heat with a shotgun, and has somehow managed to bin the hardest fight in the game so far. I actually needed to find a point where the shotgun knockback would knock me forward instead of just backwards, and then from here it was I had to use an additional Spitfire to regain my health as I slowly chipped him down. It was just a series of trading blows, and honestly if I didn't have that extra health, I probably would have died here. I don't think this will be the absolute hardest, but as of right now, Cletus is far in the lead and up there with Carlito 2. Initially, I actually thought that this fight was going to be a bit awkward because Steven can weapon swap and there's a lot of tight choke points in here and it might be hard to hit him because he'll hide behind his cart. However, I actually ended up surprising myself with this fight. This was probably the easiest fight we've had in the entire game after Carlito won because Steven just got confused with his AI and kept going back and forth while I whittled his health down with a constant spit. A very easy fight and now we're able to make our way over to Adam. Who will run my store when I'm gone? <laughs> I start by prepping my Spitfire before activating the fight, so I don't need to worry about being knocked down by Adam during drinking animation. However, this was actually the easiest fight of the whole run. Apparently, Adam can block almost everything but Spit. I somehow didn't take a single hit during this fight, and Adam went down clean, besides some rolling. As well, I ended up getting the secret entrance to Paradise Plaza from Wonderland, because this will massively help us with the endgame. Up next, we have our second Kent mission. I make sure to get the erotic photo for him, which we get off a grieving Jesse, like the true gentleman Frank is. After this, we just need our final mission, which will come up later and we'll be done with Kent. What have we here? During the recording of this challenge, I actually almost forgot that Joe existed for a moment. I didn't expect this fight to be all that hard because Joe's specialty is entirely melee. She has a taser and she used her fists. And we don't really care to save the survivors since this isn't a saving run and we actually need to kill them later anyway. As expected, Joe went down without a single hit of damage. She's always been one of the more underwhelming bosses of the game, and for a while I could actually just stunlock Joe and she wouldn't be able to move.
Joe goes down covered more than amateur porn star. As well, I do the same to the survivors to make sure I can spawn in the later killers, and then we move to our next boss. Behold! The end of the world is upon us! Death itself has overflowed upon the world, defiling us all! So one of the things that actually spawns in the game around the middle is the cultist and the beginning of Sean. We're just going to entirely ignore this for now because this is just a symbolization that the cult has entered the game and we don't need to worry about the survivor because Frank is an awful person. As well, during the recording of this, I ended up breaking my time skip mod a bit and I had to use my waiting time to actually make more spitfires uh, because I didn't want it timing out again. <laughs> After we get our Spitfires, I'm actually ready to go over to the Snipers. I don't think the Snipers are going to be difficult, but they will be incredibly annoying, given that they have a tendency to run and shoot, which is the whole basis of their fight. And this is going to be especially worse without the use of a skateboard. As well, it's going to be worse than that, because not only is it not just a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a three-on-one, -on -one with three different Snipers of the Hall family. Shockingly enough though, this fight was weirdly easy. It was the worst game of whack-a-mole I ever played, and most of the tedium came from their weird serpentine dodges. I ended up getting one of them stuck in a store, and then the other two just never moved out of my spit, and they kept walking into it. Either way, all three go down with almost no issue, and this was a surprisingly simple fight. Initially, I thought the Isabella fight coming up might actually be on par with Cletus, given how difficult it is to actually aim during the fight and how fast paced it is. Normally, we do have a pretty simple strategy with the gun where we jump over her and just keep shooting her, and it's hard to say if the spit would be the exact same. As per usual, I end up preparing my Spitfire before the fight, this fight definitely wasn't the easiest, and I did take an early hit, but it does seem that Isabel mostly works the same between shooting with the gun and spitting on her, barring the main difference of timings. Isabel ultimately goes down without a fight, and the main issue we had is actually just voiding a few zombies, but overall, we take her down. Although her fight is done, we still do need to meet up with her later so we can prepare for our next fight. During the meeting of Isabella, I actually end up using the Spitfire left over to spit on the zombie killing her so we can free her from the zombie and escort her back. However, during this escort back, we're actually going to use the timing and the safety of Isabella to fight Sean. Sean is the cult leader, and to add an extra challenge to this, I'm not going to be allowed to use my skateboard once I enter the movie theater, since technically the cultists are a part of this fight. I'm expecting him to be similar to Cliff, but I am expecting a tough fight. At first, I did not realize how many cultists there were. Already, I had to use one of my Spitfires, and I had to murder about 30 of them with sheer spit. Hopefully, I won't need to reload during the Sean fight. Sean was surprisingly difficult, actually. He has somehow been the most mobile of the fight with his jump slash and quick combos, and was able to get a couple of clean hits on me as a result of this and keep me on my toes. We end up taking him and his survivors down. However, during the taking of the survivors, it was actually harder than the fight itself because while the survivors don't exactly go down clean with the spit, they do take a while. One of the survivors in particular ended up being in range of the cultist, meaning while I was damaging him, cultists would flood into the room. The major problem with the cultists, though, is that they do have a one-shot kill with the explosive, which won't exactly kill me, but it'll strip me of my clothing and all my weapons, and it'll harm my time, and possibly lose Isabella, so we need to be very careful what going here.
We end up spitting on all five survivors, avoid the one in KOs, and are able to make it to our next boss. Ah, Frankie. Good timing. I was, uh, just about to shoot my... Piece de resistance. <laughs> Going into this, Kent normally is one of the easiest fights in the game, given he has a very low health pool. However, it should be noted that he is able to stun lock you as a character, and he can hit you from 100 to 0 with an infinite combo if you're not careful. Going into Kent, I was 100% wrong. Kent has somehow managed to be the second hardest fight in the game, and he actually almost murdered me. Kent's ridiculous mobility and his quick attacks ended up forcing me to miss my Spitfire and unable to attack. After the end of this fight, I end up taking a lot of OJ and ready for our next fight with Paul. Who, who, who is there? Stay, stay back! Stay back! Get, get in closer and I'll, I'll light this place up! Paul as a boss fight has never been a difficult boss fight, unfortunately. Paul's always been more of an annoying one because he doesn't fight you like the rest of the psychopaths. Paul's main strategy is to retreat and run away while throwing bombs and molotovs at you. I was already not happy about this going into it, and especially I knew for a fact it was going to be a pain without the use of my skateboard. Overall, Paul ended up being just as annoying as I thought he would be. And while he does pause frequently, it was actually pretty difficult to get a lot of the spitting in. It felt really rewarding when he was finally down to be able to spit on him to death while he was being covered in flames. Now that we're done with Paul, we're going to be going into our next major story mission and boss of Carlito 3. We're also done with the optional bosses and the only ones left are actually mandatory, so it's going to get a lot tougher as of right now. So this fight is a bit awkward since, in order to spawn Carlito, the car is expected to be used. I'm going to be using the car to spawn him in, but once Carlito spawns in, I'm going to have to go it on foot. This will likely be the hardest fight in the whole run given the brutality. And holy hell, this fight was actually ridiculous. With the amount of zombie grabs and car chasing, I'm surprised I actually managed to get as many hits in as I did. From this point, the fight is done but we still have his bombs and we'll need to gather them on foot. This wasn't necessarily difficult, it was more long and tedious as the main issue was just avoiding the larger zombie hordes. Luckily we have a zombie ride and can just leap over them. we managed to get out in the nick of time and prepare for our final bosses. Before the boss fight, we actually do have one of the worst cases in the game, which is just defending Isabella. For the most part, I end up not using the skateboard because I want to be a little bit more legit, but we don't really get into many fights here as I manipulate all the zombies away from Isabella so she doesn't fight them. Outside this, we're able to go on to our final boss, Larry. I have a reputation to uphold. Larry is the final boss for 72 hour mode. He is a big man with a bigger damage and health to boot. I'm mainly worried about his cleaver hits, but I do think he'll be a harder version of Sean. Thank you. 
Larry ended up being incredibly tough as he is fast, hits hard, and has a form of super armor. During the fight, I'm mostly trading blows, but we do actually hit a point where he ends up getting me down to 1 HP. Overall, I drink my Spitfire and Larry goes down, and that ends up closing 72 hour mode in the main story. I'll be damned. He's still alive. But we're not done yet. We have Overtime. To amp things up during overtime, it's all special surface soldiers. That being said, I'm going to be removing the rule about skateboard usage starting now, since instead of zombies, the mall is now littered with deadly soldiers who need to be spat on, and the timer should no longer be an issue as well, so we'll no longer be using our skateboards and we'll have to go it on foot. I will be having to gather queens though, so do keep that in mind if you see my inventory has different items than just the spit. Oddly enough, with the added challenge, this overall still ended up being rather simple. I did try to hit the helicopter, but I remind you once again that the spit could not get that high, and anytime I tried gaining height, the helicopter would just fire missiles at me, and overall we couldn't actually kill him. During the overtime mode, we actually also need to gather 10 queens, so I take my time with this and spit on the zombies needed till we have our 10 and are ready to go for our final fights. From this point onward, it's actually incredibly easy since I already know how to do a lot of the stuff given we already do this in the speedrun. The tunnel is super simple since it's just a quick escort of Isabella and not dying as we breeze through this with her antivirus hand thing. We're able to avoid all the zombies and make our way all the way to the end. We do need to pull the switch to open the gate, but overall I drink my Spitfire and we're able to beat this quickly. On the next section, we do end up using a gun, but this isn't Frank shooting the gun. It's Isabella, and it's a forced section, so we're going to have to do this anyway. We end up breezing through this, making sure to shoot the sensors on either the right or the left, depending on what angle we get. And it doesn't matter that we're taking damage during this, because we will be getting a full heal for Frank once you're going into the fight. These automated machines are no use at all on the battlefield. Switch to manual control. So for the speed run and for the inspiration on this video idea, we actually already do this fight with Spitfire, so I already kind of know what to do. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it allows you to beat Brock Massman or leveled with the usage of Spitfire since it does base damage. This fight goes as planned, and we spit on his knees until he dies, and while I do get knocked off the tank, it's a very minor setback as we finish him up and GG. With Brock dead, we have now killed every single boss in Dead Rising only using our spit. This was actually a surprisingly fun and simple challenge. Overall, what compelled me to do this? I thought it would be funny, and it was, and I've also been wanting to try a challenge like this for a while now. I can now officially say that I've beaten every boss in Dead Rising with spitting, and can confirm that it is humanly possible. I feel a possible extra challenge in the future may be starting on a fresh file instead of a level 50 file, but we can always try that another time. As well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit subscribe so you can see more horror content. You can also let me know in the comments or on my Twitter on what ho other horror game challenges you might want me to take on. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.